Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Creative Truth Podcast, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals. Today, we're on site. We've got a Creative Truth alumnus, Bradley Collins. He's an independent artist. And we have Micah Norton. She's a motion graphics artist for SCAD, which is the big uh, art school, which we'll get into. Um, we Yeah, we just like randomly bumped into each other the other night. And yeah. wait, so I want to know more about your background. Okay. Um, I did insta stalk you a little bit. Cool. And I did see that uh, Bradley has had some influence with the whole chance based oh, sure. decision making. Yeah. Um, uh, before we get into like what you're doing now, what was like the first little spark for you when you were younger to what led to what you do now? So I, growing up, um, was really into like school and math and science and big nerd and like type A. So I didn't think I had an artistic bone in my body forever. And then after high school, I moved to Montana for four years and didn't really pursue education because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just sort of um, skied a lot and worked in a pizza place and took random classes, like uh, every, every single type of class you could take, computer, French, every class that the... Um, University of Montana had to offer basically and then I took a film class and I loved it and my mom started teaching at SCAD so I could go there for free which was a huge draw and then I um, moved here went to school for film originally and then realized what I like about movies and everything is the title sequence and then oh that's right yeah yeah so there's a then I found out there's a whole industry based around it and I am sorry if you said already where are you from bef- uh, before Charleston South Charleston Carolina. and then why Montana um, I was like where where's the state where I don't know a single person okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> and just like I'm gonna be a ski bum for a little bit mm-hmm. figure it out yep. yeah I was wanted to oh it was amazing I never did but where in Montana were you Missoula there's still time yeah, yeah you yeah. can oh, just yeah. go do for it for sure yeah well I, I didn't leave home until I was 27 so I tell okay. like it's like not too late like you yeah can, you can figure it out for like, sure like it's, there's no my, my, my baby cousin um, you know she's like she's out of college now and she's a yoga teacher and uh, yeah I'm just like I mean that can definitely be a career yeah but only if you want it to be you know yeah like so yeah, yeah. so she's I'm like you have tons of I'm 32 I'm still figuring it out yeah so. I tell every everyone like that are younger don't go to college yet you don't yeah. know who you are like yeah. Wait. Oh man, yeah. I didn't go either. Like, yeah. And I definitely wouldn't have made it. No. <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't want to go, but not a chance. And then to watch people, like once I did go to school, when the, then you're like the old guy, and you're like, half these kids shouldn't be here just because they don't yeah. give a fuck. That's scad. But it's like that's fine. But like, or it's just not ready. Like. And then you, I don't know. I think like I didn't know about like art schools like that until way later. And I think when you just decide, like it is a lot of money, and it but it is like a specialty thing. And like I loved my time there. I thought it like I got a bunch out of it, but I just put in like the work, and you know, like I wanted to figure out stuff. And I was ready to do it, and yeah. so I think that's yeah, what I think it's is. like. It's hard when, like, it would be hard to be a parent and be like, "Fuck, sending my sixteen-year-old, yeah, sending her to like art school." It's, like when I went, I was like, "I don't know what I'm gonna do there," but and I had never painted or done. I was just like, did music and stuff, and so or like music, like like concerts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do either of y'all remember like a moment where you were like, "Oh, I could see actually see myself doing this." Yeah. Like this is super cool. I think mine so that one film class I took in in Montana, we it was a documentary class and we got paired up to make a documentary for the semester. And um the person that I was paired up with uh dropped the class. And so it was just me and I, we were doing it on skateboarding and I was like, I hate this. Like, I'm not, I'm not into, sorry. It is just not for me. I didn't have any experience Probably with it. Probably not a whole lot going on in Montana. Either. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it was really hard <laughs> to find people to interview. Um, and 
So I was like, let me do something interesting. So my boyfriend and my roommates at the time decided, because we were probably 21 or whatever, we were drinking heavily, so we decided to become sober for that time and document, uh, document that. it. And that was when I was like, hmm, I think that I could do something in this general area. So the one that anyone who is in motion graphics will talk about is the title sequence for Seven, that movie with... Um, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman? And it's... Um, what's his name? Kevin Spacey yes. is the bad guy. Yeah. Yes. Is Brad Pitt in that? In real life and the, and the movie. Yeah. yeah, Brad Pitt's the, the main... What's in the box? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, duh. Um, I, actors are not my thing. But that title sequence is like famous for being the first one that used um like real footage in the way that you have to watch it but it it's like it was groundbreaking and everyone has copied it since i can't even remember it i'll have to watch it again it's because now it wouldn't even seem uh anything out of the ordinary but at the time that one was and then also uh vertigo because it's just the eye and then the swirl Mm -hmm. and it it's just nice and simple yeah that one is like very much like of its time to oh yeah and yeah. that's it so it's done by Saul Bass who did all the Hitchcock title sequences and he's he actually invented title sequences as we know them having like a graphic component at all was his whole thing and he's he's like the father of motion graphics I went in for like I love title sequences like I said um, then I found out that is like the most coveted position getting a job doing specifically that in the motion graphics industry um, you need a lot of years of experience, um, which is what I'm doing now. But my style and stuff, like I've never really been into 3D. Just visually, doesn't doesn't spark anything for me. Um, so most of my stuff is 2D, and I feel like my style just is not a thing. It's I've just experiment with new stuff, and that's. And new ideas like he sparked so many new ideas in my head and that was wonderful um, when we met but yeah so like I just started using AI a bunch um, to make animations which has been really interesting and this other software that it's like um, frame matching so you can basically if you wanted if you took a reference video of of Spaghetti going into a pot. Spaghetti going into a pot, yeah. Um, Then you could paint over one the first frame of it with some style that's like illustrative or whatever, and then paint over the last frame of it with the same style, and then plug it into this thing, and it would just generate the whole video. Tweening or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, that's. But then part of well, so I'm I'm re- I'm referring to like that one project. the noodle one yeah, yeah that the, the that was one. using EB synth so I that what I just explained is the intended purpose of it uh, for people to like animate without having to animate every frame basically um, and but what I've been doing with it is is just like not the actual purpose I take videos of random stuff and overlay that like it's like running it through the program over and over and over again until it gives me a really fucked up looking thing <laughs> and that's the goal that's the goal and you just like you know you're done when it's yeah. like okay yeah that, that kind of sounds like your stuff because you don't actually know what it's you know your algorithm but you don't know what it's actually going to look like like you yeah, know yeah. you know what your first frame your first frame looks like yeah and your source footage yep I didn't know what she did when because I've like I don't I can't get into the computer thing yeah but I have like she's helped out a bunch and like it's cool to I don't know we just think slightly different Mm -hmm. to where it's like like, I can't figure it out oh you could just do this and (laughs) you don't have to sit there and like write everything out with by hand and like figure it all out which and is you cool. You do the same because yeah, you have a she perspective like, on animation that I don't. Yeah. It, which is so far removed from, from everything that I've learned, you know? And so you, yeah, you give me new ideas for but stuff yeah. when I'm stuck. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
We we actually just like worked through a whole <laughs> this whole grid thing. Yeah. The other night at like 3 a.m., we were sitting here and we're like, we got to do it because I need to know it for tomorrow. Yeah. And I don't even know where it went, but <laughs> like ended up being these long papers and he basically was like, like my i did it like how i write it out and she's like no so you so then you're gonna do it this way I'm like yeah i call that this <laughs> that's it was, dash it's circle hard to and explain. four in a circle because <laughs> the whole math thing in his work is also hard to explain because it's all made up but that when i when i learned about it we spent one night on mushrooms where i was like you have to just explain every step of it and he'd never done that before. Yeah. And it was cool. It was like a little, like a lesson. It took like four hours, but I was like, okay, I get what all these symbols mean now. I get what the math is, which is not math, it's something else. But so took that experience and started making my own rules, which is definitely more like rigid than yours and like even yeah, the way they look like i type them up with bullet points and yours I know. she showed like, me she was like here i have I'll, i can show you how i need to print something out and it was like bullet point like we'll have to show you and yeah, yeah we'll find it um <laughs> i was like oh i've never done this i just like write it and i know what it means but i've never like like first you would flip a coin for this and which yeah, it, like it I was cool to like rules read it that way. Um, it's not the most like fulfilling because you're not like making decisions, and so a lot of the time you're like end up being you're like I don't know. It's just done, but it's like the whole process. And that for me, like the writing is the best part. You but have a name for the actual piece of paper, right? Like it's an order sheet. It's a work order. The work yeah. order. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's but evolved just, so much since that. Yeah, yeah. I actually have been thinking about the work order again. I'm a, I want to. I found them. I found all this old, like this box in the uh, garage that had all the bowling stuff, and then let you borrow some hard drive. And she was like, "I watched the bowling stuff you talk about." I was like, "Oh, that's yeah, where it's I've at." Never seen it. It was super cool. But I don't know what. What she she was before she like we talked about what I do she was already in the she was already in the game mm-hmm. so, so it's not all me um, yeah so if you're listening and you're kind of like wondering what the <laughs> hell we're talking about um, Bradley and I did a whole episode kind of where we not not as in depth as y'all did I'm sure but we kind of talked about the like. The, the episode in the title, I say like monotony is cu- part of the goal. Like even if you're halfway into a painting and you decide you don't really like how it looks, you got to finish it because that's what you've been told. That's what the work order says. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you are, if you're into that kind of um, l- learning more about the process um, and, and also like part of like uh, what I was drawn to on your Instagram feed is that there were a lot of grids in your feed. Mm-hmm. And then as I like, like, I found that one, it, um, the, the opacity or like the overlay mm-hmm. was you gave that up to chance because you said Bradley yeah. influenced you there. And so that is a, like a little transition of something that we talk about a lot and we kind of explore on this podcast is kind of the balance between, you know, I'm not a psychologist or anything or, or a biologist, whatever. Right. Left brain, right, right True. brain. The, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Self-proclaimed. True. But um, you said, like, at the very beginning, you said you are always very, like, type A and, like, you didn't you didn't find yourself to be a creative person. Yeah. And now you're, like, working at this, like, this very highly esteemed art <laughs> college. When were you like, yeah, I am creative, you know what? Like, I really don't think it that that happened until I came to SCAD. So I did that whole film class and that, I felt like I could make a job out of it, but I was like still in the mind of uh, everything being logical, you know? Uh, it, like, as if it were a science problem is how I looked at making that documentary. <laughs> I was like, there are steps that you can take to get to the answer, which is the end. But then when I came to SCAD, the foundations classes, color theory, I, uh, it's mathematical, but the projects we had to do with my teacher, who was amazing, um, totally took me out of like that zone, which was comfortable, uh, the math and science brain zone. 
I couldn't use it in those projects and um, they ended up good. And so I was like, oh, this is like stretching my brain in a new way that I've never done before. And that's exciting. Yeah. I hate the whole uh, fuck AI movement. I think that's dumb and it is not people who say that are not researching it well enough um, because there are programs like Dolly and chat GPT and all of that that it, that are very user friendly and anyone could do it and doesn't require much skill or time to make a piece of art and that's one thing but if you go to some of the other AIs to try and make art like I use Disco Diffusion um, a lot and it's you have to learn to code like in and then figure out how coding can turn into art using a bunch of different things and knowing settings and it takes a long time he he's done it too yeah um, it, to like it's set crazy. up the thing and it, it really is you feel like you are making art especially with what i do because it is computer based i feel it feels similar um and it comes out with wild stuff uh but yeah i think like for me it was cool because i like i start, i think i started and just put like i mean you are it's like i don't know one two three you know, like one comma two comma and then i would just she was writing these whole things because she knew all about like what you need to do to make it come out like you could make like uh i don't know a sweet believable backdrop or something you know and yeah. i was like i just gotta like i want to see what if i put one through ten or zero through one or nine like what will it make over mm-hmm. five rather hours. than using like words as prompts he was start he just wanted to use numbers and stuff and like, yeah. yeah and so then i just kind of went with that from there and like would type there like were so grid. many cool ones that but came out of like, that experiment yeah, yeah i think like for me it was cool because it kind of was like a like a what a sketchbook like i don't mm-hmm. know like i would it was cool to see how something else took just the i just thought about like the keywords of what i use which is very minimal and like not like like fantasy island and you know it's like like where you could put in this thing that it really knows what yeah it'll make a realistic image yeah of like you're like i won't, it's going to be somewhere around there like just giving it like yes no Mm -hmm. one two three and like cmyk and And we we are still talking about at the end of the day paint on canvas right no we're talking about this ai oh yeah this is the ai that she she showed me and i was just i was like you should do this so that was like what changed my whole thing your foray into digital yes your first foray into yeah but i like i mean and i didn't i don't know what like i I don't know, but it was really cool because it gave me ideas, and it also like every once in a while it would it like a couple of them came out and they looked like book pages and looked like what I do. It was it weird, was wild actually. It how was, similar it came out just by putting in those zero through nine. CMYK. Yeah, but it was like in like a book, like how I do. Like yeah. I mean, I just write all my stuff down, but. I don't know. I thought it was cool, and it like gave me new ideas. For sure. And it, but I, yeah, I don't think that I would be like, no, I would never use it. I think you have like with anything, you have to have a good reason, and like, yeah, if it's gimmicky, then everyone knows, and, right? And that's fine if that works and whatever. But like, also, I think I mean, you know, there's going to be like an app version. And then there's this, which that's why I thought, because I, I literally would have to call her and be like, how the fuck do I get this to run? And she's like, so you're going to scroll down, <laughs> open this up. You got to type in this code and then you'll scroll down more, check these boxes and then yeah. it, it'll run if you did it right. So I think that the true art of AI does come from like sinking time into learning these applications and things and it's not going away it's just opening another s- sphere of art i think you know people are still going to value paintings um 
people and are also going to buy gonna value AI yeah. NFTs and I also we, we're just expanding the art world. We're also opinion. big nerds and like I think that it would be so cool like you could make I don't know like a map like and be like make me a map for D or yeah, like that is and awesome. have it like uh, i want it middle earth and it would like be a map yeah in the style of picasso or, like, but or it, whoever yeah like, whatever you it's want well, you can literally map. just i mean you can I mean, do it it doesn't even have to be like a painting or like where you add an artist you can it could just be like look at pictures of medieval maps and yeah. it'll be it'll but make a like random one it's crazy. I mean, and you know, I'm not, I don't know what it could, um, I guess go bad. It could mess up the art world, but like, so could the Whatever. art world. Like <laughs> Dada messed up the art yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. Like well, uh, a lot of artists went through like a digital phase when Photoshop came out in the early nineties. Exactly. Yeah, and, like, which is cool. And then everyone, yeah. like, yeah. It's but, bad. Yeah. But at the time it was like, they're just trying out a new medium. Exactly. And, yeah. 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 And now it's like, I mean, if you're, very helpful for printmaking instead of like hand sure. cutting, which I always wanted to figure out how to do like all the like hand cutting and cause I, I can see it. I can't that. get into the, it's like, well, no, I wanted to cut this exact thing. Just yeah. cut that out. I could do it with an exacto knife, but <laughs> it's not doing what I want, <laughs> but that's, you know, well, I think that's why we work good together. Cause I'm like, can you just get rid of this? <laughs> I've been trying for days. <laughs> well, I think so, so specifically with your paintings, it is you kind of think like a robot, like you're mm -hmm. just like here's the algorithm, but then at the end of the day, it's human hand to canvas, so like there's little imperfections in the line and like that's what like yeah, you could have a perfect grid according yeah. to the algorithm on a spreadsheet or on pixels, but like yeah, yeah. you're yeah, I mean, I guess technically the algorithm could figure out how to make it look like human hand, but like, I think that's what's cool about your thing is you're taking something analog and, or I mean, take something digital. Yeah. Yeah. And like the concept. Analog. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We've had a lot of ideas about ways to collaborate on projects. Um, none of them have been right yet. I think they're all just like real wild. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> we would have to like dive into something fully we're like we should get like four old movie projectors yeah. and then project like this artist that we both like i can't even remember his name mm -hmm. might, um todd will be mad at me cage no it's he he did the butterflies on film and he was just like so they just like oh yeah i, I can't remember metamorphosis either. yeah he's great yeah. But I don't know, like syncing up four things and doing CMYK or messing with light. Yeah. We just talk about light a lot and like the ways. That's true. Actually, yeah. Like the other night, uh, the night after we saw you, I threw a disco birthday party for my mom <laughs> at Lone Wolf in that back room. Um, nice. And it was so fun. But Bradley and I, like, we had this one big disco ball set up and we yeah, were we, like we, we need to just real disco watch balls like the light and and we set up like all these videos of different types of videos of and angles just to examine the light on the disco ball and they turned out really cool but yeah, yeah I we know. i think we just have like such a similar mind i spent thinking about the grid thing like everything oh, yeah. we've talked about has been grid stuff. And oh yeah, and but I, I think it was like she already had stuff before she met me, and it just kind of worked out. It's like yeah, I guess we're I, grid people. Yeah, we're just grid. We just <laughs> we're just you know confined, just really in the lines, just in the matrix. We're just yeah. real. No, just like we just like to stay very <laughs> under the radar and clean, straight lines in the grid. Just I like do. Everyone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you? Um, have you? Have y'all watched anything or read anything or listened to anything that's really like inspired you in the last like week or month? Like mm. anything that jumps out? That that's a good question. We 
we watch Bob Ross. We 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 oh, bought yeah. this. We have this TV that has a Bob Ross channel. Only Bob Ross, all day. All day, every day, and we. So we've been. Every we night. We go to night. We go to. We go to night. We, we go, go to night. We go to <laughs> nighttime <laughs> with Bob. Uh, it's, we, yeah. we go to. We it's go to sleep, but the yeah, squirrels. it is. But also, it's fascinating. Oh, like, I did, and I didn't know about the squirrels. I mean, I had seen stuff, but I didn't know the ins and outs. His wife's on there and shit His son. sometimes. Like Steve, but yeah, it's just interesting. I don't know. It's like it's cool to watch someone be that good at like their craft of like how they do it yeah. you know like, and it's so different and the opposite of anything that we do um so it's kind of a nice creative break but still being creative you know i mean it makes me think about stuff all the time like the i don't know like uh, mountains further away are a little lighter because there's st- atmosphere <laughs> yeah. and yeah. once like closer a little darker and you're like oh yeah. it makes it look yeah. so fucking easy it's Dude. crazy but then when you really watch it you're like the pressure that he's putting on that palette knife is so precise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beat the yeah. devil like, out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beat the and then he's going to beat the, <laughs> beat the dickens out of it. Uh, yeah, no, it, I mean, that's what's, I think, cool about it is just that to watch someone, you know it's hard, but you feel like it's easy and you could paint along, <laughs> but you know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's making me want to paint. I've never, we were know, just she, talking yeah. about this. I've never painted on a canvas before, and I really want to. I've tried. It's hard. Yeah. But I wanted, I want to get better at portraits specifically yeah. because, like, that's the probably the hardest thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm not. Like in oil? Uh, or watercolor or water. Oh, cool. Yeah, water yeah. base or oil base. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's really hard. But I think, like, for me, so, like, video started with actually like skateboarding videos which is all on the pod like many yeah. many times and then it worked backwards to like actual filmmaking and then eventually like digital photography and then like film photography and then like yeah painting and it's because like that is all interconnected and the more Completely. you understand specifically light like con- and contrast light. yeah yeah like yeah, yeah. yeah and and actually like like the my big secret of taking like a good um portrait in savannah with all the live mm-hmm. like the live oak and, and the spanish moss and stuff like it is kind of hard because there's the holes in the in yeah. the canopy yeah. so there's like little pockets of light i literally just i like look at a person and i'm like okay turn with me and i just turn until they have like decent light nice yeah. like, okay yeah. that's that's your backdrop because yep. this yeah, is this is how yeah. the light looks best yeah, yeah exactly so and uh yeah it's i mean for and like you know, I've been doing it for a bit, so for me, it's yeah. like very. But there's no, nothing scientific about it. It's just like right. we're gonna. You're just gonna turn until your the light is flattering. Wider head, thin light. Yeah. Narrow head, broad light. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So, it, what was your, what was your uh, like, background? Did you, where yeah. did you go to school? I, have I don't think about I've, this we too. know where <laughs> we know where you're from. We know what you like, but we don't know what what you do other than this. I so. <laughs> I I wasn't a good student, but uh, my dad is a very left brain dude, and my mom's very creative. Um, oh, I, we talked about that, yeah. Because yeah. my dad's like my dad's like a crazy mathematician. Yep. And my mom's just like a badass. That like she's like I'm gonna be the best diver. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna like wanna, I want to teach people how to dive, so I'm gonna just do that, or. I'll, train someone to do something or yeah she's all over the place my mom has a new hobby every week and right now it's stained glass yeah. and ribbon dancing and the reason she does Ooh. ribbon dancing is because she was learning how to play the spoons like abby the spoon girl on youtube That's and no then way. people found it annoying or at least she said that people found it so she's like i'm ribbon dancing now because it's silent who was telling her it was annoying oh like people in the house yeah, people i thought like, people like on youtube it was, no 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 there's this like, lady how'd you even find it i know like, why, why just don't look she's just really funny and like yeah, just yeah, yeah. tries and actually i'd love to have them on the pod just to kind of like yeah, no, yeah. and they balance should, each other sure. and everything but um but then yeah my, so i was like gonna go to school for engineering okay which i i can't even do basic math so i don't know how that would have ever worked Me neither out. made up but my mom was like you should go to school for um making skateboarding videos and i was like that's not a thing she's like well you know you can like learn how to work with a camera yeah and then i got okay. to school yeah and i was like Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. And I still don't know what I want to do, but I know it's going to involve a camera. What was your major? Broadcasting and mass communication. Oh, okay. I was going to do film, but I took the safer route. Yeah. And so, 
which like is fine that's yeah. what turned into motion media yeah. yeah yeah so well and so like my college roommate he is exact the exact same degree as me and he is an on-air like tv reporter like we took all the same classes yeah, yeah. and i'm like an artist and like yeah. you know behind yeah. the scenes camera guy but then other people in our program um yeah went on to like visual effects and mm-hmm. it, it, maybe maybe they went to like graduate school or whatever but that's like that's interesting yeah, it's just, um, I think it's just such a broad thing. Like, yeah. And then honing in on, like, you know, I try, I've done everything. I've tried, like, weddings, real estate. Like, I've right. done um, just a bunch of different, like, marketing stuff. Pod, I'm trying podcasting. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, you're doing great. Gotta try it no, all. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah you did more podcasts than, like, the shows that we <laughs> watch yeah. that have so many viewers. Yeah. Well, you're, what's, like... What's weird is I I went back into the metric. I think I told you all this the other night too. I went back into the metrics and like in one month, I in thirty days I had seventy downloads and I hadn't done I haven't done an episode in a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like two people a day are. It's not me. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's my mom. You know, like I don't know who's listening. So <laughs> that's so that's cool. why I'm like, all right, like at least there's a couple people out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. And, that's what, and you like doing it, so yeah. yeah. I love I love I love like analyzing that that's like my analytical side yeah yeah is like all right how is this um like and then uh, do you do you have like imposter syndrome because oh yeah uh yeah because like i i like sometimes i'm like i'm a total hack yeah. you know uh oh, yeah. yeah i live in this <laughs> battle between feeling like i am a complete phony and then also being like no i'm i'm actually this is real art i'm an artist um Especially living here where everyone's, uh, is like physical analog art. Um, and I'm the only digital person. Traditional media. Yeah. Traditional media. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it, just a part of every day and being a woman in any field, but specifically like digital stuff. What are your positive affirmations that are like, hell yeah, I'm a fucking artist, you know, like I honestly, I don't. I couldn't tell you. I, Me. Bradley. Yeah, you're good. Trying to score you some brownie points. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, no. You. Well, because you treat me as like, um, like you'll come to me with questions about your stuff. And so that makes me feel <laughs> like, oh, wait, he actually values my artistic opinion. So, yeah, no. Good point. Yeah. I mean,. You definitely think differently than me, and I, I don't, you know, I don't know what all's going on up there, but Neither. it's nice to be able to talk to someone that, I don't know, like I trust your opinion even not being, like, with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I like your, I liked your art the first day we met, and yeah, we me too. Had a That's great, what I was like. Great conversation it about it, and then it's all gone from there but like yeah I just like I think the best part is just like cause when you I don't know like I made some weird stuff in school and you go through all these critiques and like some people get like really good critiques because I don't know not for any real reason I guess but just like cause maybe that class like the people in there get or on that kind of side of the fence of like what they're making. Right. But I just like, like, well, you said you, but I watched you work on this for so long, but then you ended up painting it all black. I'm like, well, it's what happens, you know, like it's under there. It's, it's how Mm -hmm. life goes. Like sometimes it's all fucked at the end and it's just gone. It's like, whatever. And I don't know. Like, I think that, it's cool to meet someone because I remember going through school and just being like, I have, like, I can't feel good about what I'm doing because I, no one knows, and I don't know shit, but I'm, like, interested in this thing. And I had some, like, great teachers that were very, like, they're like this is, you know, like, pushed me to continue. But it's hard when, like, everyone in the class is just like, this is not yeah. what like this is bullshit you're cheating almost you know right. like 
I don't know. So it's yeah. cool to like meet someone that feels the same way. Yeah. About uh all that, and you can just like, I can ask you, and I know that you will tell me like, like if I even if like, what do you think about my website? You know, like it's shit, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure it is, but you know, I don't know. I I take your artist opinion well, thanks. highly. I rank that highly too. So thanks. Yeah. That's Do you ever cool. feel like um, like that you're not like doing the right thing or like you're phony or whatever? Imposter you know? syndrome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, because it's not necessarily like making money. Because if you make too much money, then you're like a sellout. Exactly. You know, when you don't get to choose, you're like, I know what it needs. You come in, you know, like I know what it needs sometimes because I went through the schooling of like. It's really still not doing what I visually wanted to do, which is cool for me because I've just like it before way before we met, you talked about the like it's all an experiment, and that was like my whole time at SCAD. I had teachers that were like, Well, maybe you should think through your experiments more than before yeah. you like make art. And I knew that that's what it was, but it was, so it's just like, I think it's just hard to get up there and be like, it didn't do it. But I also do a lot of my stuff just like, like I go to the studio be, and the best part is starting to write it out. Even if it takes me two hours to get to that point, like I know I have to do it after that because I want to. But just like being there and doing it is what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. So like the, I definitely, every time I paint, I'm like, I'm not a painter. What's something you're really proud of? Um, Good question. I know what it is. Yeah? The alphabet thing. Oh. This is the coolest thing ever. It's crazy. So to go to sleep... Um, because my brain doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. I learned how to say Hence that alphabet Ross. backwards, and then that was like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And so I was like, I've got to learn something new, because it was too easy. And then I was like, I'm going to learn it backwards phonetically. So now I can say the alphabet backwards phonetically, like if you were to record it and then play it back okay we need both now just regular alphabet backwards is z y x w v u t s r q p o n m l k j i h g f e d c b a and then to go phonetically it is yizyowska woylabud yiv woyitse ra week yip wo ne me le yik yej ya she Yeech fe ye 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 ye. Sounds like Polish. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like uh, yeah, Satan. Hey, B, C, D, E, F, D, H, I, J, H, H, L, M, N, O, B, H, I, R, S, E, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Is you learning that yeah. something that you recite to yourself when you're trying to sleep or that's what you would do in my head that's what I yeah how did you I figure out each letter um so I just was like what is Z backwards and then you're like Ease. if you were to spell it out it would be Z E E Y so then you're like yeez also that that's been the most interesting thing is learning that pretty much every letter is like it's it ends in E A B C, D, E, F, G. Like, it all has an E in it. But, um, so yeah, it would go Z, E's, X. How would you spell that? E, C, K, S. So, Ske. Ske. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What did y'all think you wanted to do when, when you were in high school, I guess? Like, when you were doing all that? I, uh, for a long time, like, as a kid, and then into probably the beginning of high school was very convinced I would be a surgeon and probably could have done that if I wanted to and then I after that uh, about my 
sophomore year of high school, I decided I wanted to be an athletic director for a Division I uh, school. I really love basketball. That's how that happened. And so I, I went into college at, so I did like a little bit at the College of Charleston before I moved to Montana. And I was doing like sports administration. And I uh, managed the College of Charleston men's basketball team for a year. And it was awful. I had to do their laundry and order their food and go on the road with them. And they were all creepy. And then I was like, this is not the field for me. <laughs> and then you were like, oh, that's why I'm going to go to Montana. I'm going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you? I can't remember what you had said. For? Like what maybe you thought you might want to do when you were a kid or, you know, young adult. Before. Well, my, my first, my, the first thing I ever wanted to do was I wanted to be a a baseball player, but also, I guess, a part-time, like a like an MLB baseball player, mm-hmm. but also a part-time pizza delivery guy. That wow. was my first. I did not know this. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like funny two that you... And I like went back to answer the other one. That you but, said baseball player and pizza delivery guy, because right now you're not a baseball player, but you are... Artist and Burger Boy. Burger Boy. This is true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true, yeah. Slanging so, Bergs and just hitting home runs with the paintings. <laughs> wow. Who's more in the relationship? Who's more present and who's more like forward thinking, like goal driven, like that, thinking about like the future and that kind of thing? Um, I think Bradley present. is more present. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah. The type A thing doesn't really go away as much as I'd love for it to. But no, I'm the I'm the planner. So he grounds you in a, in a way. Oh, completely. Like, oh yeah, wow. it's a. Uh, he helped me in my brain in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, I think that like, I think that was what I was trying to get back to. I don't know if you asked me that question, but it was the, or. I guess I had thought about it earlier. My answer from what you answered is <laughs> that I worked on that I that I'm working on my mental health and uh, I'm that is what I'm excited about. Like Oh proud on, of. Proud of. Okay. Yeah. The proud of question. Nice. Yeah. And I think like That's huge. I wouldn't be here yeah. without I mean I don't know where I'd be, but I would like I wouldn't be literally right here. Right here. Yeah. Um but it's fucking hard, man. Yep. And it's a weird thing to talk about, or like it's hard for people to talk about, but I think like it's, and I also think, well, like it's hard, but I think that a lot of people are coming around. I don't know. Like I feel like it was not a open subject before, but yeah, yeah. so that's Agreed. what I'm proud of. It's just that I've kept on. That's been a big topic of this Since show the last too. time. Like yeah, yeah. Mental. Oh, yeah. And I it's think like that's cre- what we talked about. Creativity yeah. and like me just like spilling my guts about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, but like, I, like I think that all this, all the other stuff follows. So um, yeah, it was like it definitely was like way more stigmatized before. For sure. Um, and I'm I'm like a uh, like a God fearing eternal optimist, and then like a like a the sun's gonna explode and mm-hmm. nothing matters nihilist. Like and yeah, I could just waffle between mm-hmm. the two, and I'm like, it's all gonna work out, and I'm like, <laughs> you know? oh, but yeah. like yeah, so like it's all. But anyway, like all the, like the 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 all the creative stuff like falls. I heard a great quote about health that's like. Um, like he- he- healthy people want a thousand things and sick people want one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's so true. So it's like until you're like in a good place, that's why like that was part that's of why I took the podcast off. Great quote. It's like, okay. Isn't that a yeah. great quote? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I never heard yeah. that. Yeah. And it applies to mental health as well. So like that's. Yeah. Like, hell yeah. It applies to like. Everything. I everything. I think that's yeah. kind of like the secret to why we work is we're super. Very open. open. About like everything yep yeah uh mental health is a daily conversation are you, would you say my assessment's right though like you are doing pretty good like yeah relative. i mean like everyone you know we have i have shitty days and then like sometimes i'll just sit and play video games <laughs> but 
that's like my my escape and yeah and uh, which i think is like it's hard with school and stuff and then getting out of that which it's now been like a long time but scad very much drills it into you that like you're gonna be fucked all the time like this and you need to keep like do what you need to do instead of like yeah most normal jobs where it's like no they're not paying you after five or six like right you go home and that's you know and so like and you i talk to all my buddies talk about it's like that thing in the back it's like i should go do something else instead yeah even if like sunday you know like your one day you did it every day but feeling i do kind of feel bad. bad like i do too scad yeah they really push the whole use every moment of your time to make to make the, the best things. stuff yeah and you know and you just get burned out you know like that mom advice like why don't you try this and you're like that is like nothing like what i have ever expressed any interest in ever can you think of any that's like, terrible advice i and i don't know if it's terrible but i do get because i roll dice and flip coins and stuff it's like make a board game <laughs> and like now it kind of like I don't, I don't really think about making a board game, but it's like, it just, it really used to piss me off. Cause I'm like, you don't get it at all. Well, I'm like, I play board games. I get it. That's why I know about the dice and stuff, but I've made this thing like, look at it as art. Right. Not like, oh, you'd be great in the, you shouldn't make this in. It was literally just always like, make a board game. Like, that is so much different than like I don't know and so it used to piss me off now I'm kind of like that'd be cool but it would be like the wildest most like it's just because someone wasn't listening to like yeah what, I just, it was like what I was saying earlier like, like I wanted to get critiqued like yeah. Yeah, I wanted someone to be like for no, what like, you're what going for this doesn't game. work and it probably was like the most well-meaning advice like yeah exactly the, it was, so, yeah it was always like nice yes. people that i i still enjoy now but it was all, i do remember walking out and just being like yeah. they said the board game shit again so i just like yeah. glad i stuck around yeah. that was fun <laughs> like, but now i don't know i think we play a bunch of board games. I don't oh, think yeah. that I could make a board game. Well, you could have uh, the you know a- AI generative uh, Middle Earth. <laughs> That's what I should do. Yeah. That will, maybe next time. That would be <laughs> so interesting if we asked Chat GPT for like basically all the rules because I actually used it for D and D once to figure out a, That'd be cool. a game. So I'm a dungeon master, so I'd like have to come up with the shit. She's DM DM. DM DM. Dirty Mike DM. Yes. And um so I asked it once to help me come up with like a game that you would play within the game, you know, like mm. a card game or poker game. And it gave me such great ideas. Like yeah. We should do make a whole board game by asking it questions. Yeah. I've never messed around with the like text the GPT or whatever. It's crazy. It's insane. It's like yeah. keep reading Fucking about wild. how crazy it is. Kids are writing whole essays with it. I wrote, All I keep reading is that kids are not re- writing full essays with it and they keep because I guess there's so much written on the internet. I don't know what but every it time like, all these kids are like sending in things that they're like I wrote it and who fucking knows but it's like it's fully plagiarize and I can't imagine being the guy that's like they're like you're getting kicked out of school you're lying <laughs> he's like I wrote it mm-hmm. like well the original so guy. did an, an AI bot apparently yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know well just seems like that would be really shitty <laughs> what's uh, what's some advice you'd give to somebody that wants to get into the uh, motion graphics mm-hmm. realm um, the first thing that comes to mind is YouTube. I got my degree from YouTube. I learned from SCAD, I learned design and conceptual thinking. But technically, like the technical skills, I got entirely from the internet. Didn't have a single teacher help me with them. Um, so that would be my first thing is 
don't spend money uh, when you don't need to. And the second one would be um, don't be afraid to freelance. And this taps back into that other question. The advice I was giving, given coming out of school was get a job with a company. Do not try and freelance um, to begin with. But I honestly think if you have, if you're privileged enough to take that leap, do it. Um, you're gonna make more money, and you're gonna be more satisfied. You're gonna have experience by the time you get out of school, too. Completely with clients. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great advice. What about you? What's the uh, the question? Advice you'd give to an aspiring uh, artist. I artist. Guess. Yeah. I think just like don't look for someone to tell you that it's okay. I don't know. I think like find something, even if you don't think it's art or whatever, just and do that. If it's like your free time and you like to like draw or write numbers or <laughs> do whatever, like. I think you just like do that and if you want to be artistic you will get you will f- or like if you want to be an artist I guess as the question like for someone that is like oh, I'm going to be an artist I think that like just think about what you're wanting to say or what you, what it's saying to you just be like and just enjoy it and like do that and be okay with the outcome and circumstances of what you create. Yeah. I guess would be like, don't let other people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just like, if you enjoy it. I think you enjoy yeah, it. Have fun. Maybe you figure out you don't, you're not going to like sell it. Maybe you feel figure out it's like something, it's a pastime to you or you're like, this is, awesome this is huge like i want to make this a thing they're all fine like but i just can't imagine like if i really didn't like painting anymore or like what i was doing i think i would find a way to like do something that gave me that same feeling that i get right now whatever it would be and I think that's like the art, like, you know, it's, I really enjoy going to my studio mm-hmm. and sometimes I like, it's just like, I really just need to go sit in my studio. Even if I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's just like the feeling, like if you want to do it. Fulfilling. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. enjoy it as you enjoy it. Like if you like to go to the studio, go to the studio and then. If you feel like you're not going to go that day, Don't go there. that's fine. Yeah. And I think it's like okay to sell your soul sometimes because like you got to make a buck. Like exactly. you gotta- oh, yeah. I'm actively selling my soul every day. Is I've made so many connections from SCAD that I have a base of people that I can connect with and freelance comfortably. So, so podcast intros. Podcast intros. Any... Any motion graphic or graphic, I've actually been freelancing graphic design, like t-shirt design and poster stuff. Will you take a 2D logo and motionify it? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. That. So I'm also, right now I have three logo jobs that I'm trying to juggle, but then I, as an additional service, so I'll design the logo and then I will also animate it for extra money. But yeah, I will take an already existing logo and animate it for sure so businesses business owners any um, yeah youtube channel absolutely who else would be listening to this y'all if you need a motion graphic let's do a little plug how can people yes. find you and learn more um you can hit me up on my instagram at moo motion graphics um that's probably the best way to do it like i said i love your aesthetic thank you why why um um and also like that is a little bit of a niche because a lot of designers like are scared of like motion like after effects basically i know it's so interesting (laughs) yeah i i love it 
Yeah. But there's, I think that the reason why I love it is it's just, there's so much to learn about it. I, there's so much I haven't learned about it. It, The program is so deep. You can just keep going. Well, and and sometimes you are creating like uh, stuff in a 3D space, even though the output is two dimensional. Yeah. You you move your cameras and stuff like that. Exactly. How are you? Like what else? uh, What's going on with you? How can people learn more? And I'm just Bradley Collins art and um i'm also uh smash savannah at smash savannah at at smash savannah yes you can check out my designs on at smash savannah (laughs) she have you put the the burger one on there yet no i'm still working on it it's hot it's gonna be good Mm -hmm. but she made some like uh french fry box and uh chicken nugget guys saw that yeah so good thank you both for coming on the show thank you um, yeah, thanks it was for, awesome thanks for yeah. coming to us so how did you, did you relax as it, as it went along oh completely yeah, yeah that's what happens it took me like 20 minutes and then it's like, the wine and the whiskey I think I went up too, so. I think I got I got more stressed but <laughs> ah, you did great you killed it yeah but anyway uh Appreciate you both. Uh, in upcoming episodes of the Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Uh, I don't know how many episodes I'm going to do, but we'll, we're, we're going to just keep rolling with it's it. It's important. Uh, yeah, until I feel like I don't want to do it anymore. But uh, yeah. for now, it's like super fun and exciting, and I'm glad to be back, and I'm just glad I bumped into y'all. Nice, Super nice to meet you and get Thank to you. know you a little bit. Thank you. And um, if you have any episode suggestion uh, episode feedback or guest suggestions you can email me at we create truth at gmail.com if you're listening on itunes please leave us a nice five star review if you're watching on youtube do the like share subscribe thing also please drop a comment because this will probably be a little bit of a longer episode i want to know who's watching us on youtube um and yeah i'll see you in the next one